This video is part of a chess lesson that I did with Charlie, aka Moist Critical. He has a lot of videos here on YouTube, and specifically to chess, he's done a lot of lessons with Daniel Naraditsky. I've been also added as a coach as he prepares for PogChamps 3. I hope you enjoy. Today, I actually just got done with a blitz session against a, a decent player, like 2600. And there was a couple of moments in these games that I wanted to show you. A lot of them are with white, because actually our lesson today will be with the white pieces. Okay. So... Um, just different attacking patterns. Some of them have to do with peace play. Some of them have to do with, with pawn play. Uh, just, you're in live chess, right? So I can invite you. Yep. Okay, cool. You have been invited. You've been sent the first invitation. I started with D4. Do you know what this is called? D4 and Bishop F4? Do you ever get... No, I don't know this one. Okay, so this is the London system. You might have heard the name but you don't play it with white, so you probably, once you kind of consistently get about 11, 1200, a lot of people are playing this. And so g6, black is going for a setup. Actually, Daniel likes this a lot. The king's Indian defense with mm. bishop d6 and pawn. So I go knight c3. Uh, with this move, I'm trying to go for e4 and then speed up my castling. Uh, and actually in this system with white, since you're gonna castle this way anyway, you can play a move like h4. What are you looking to do with h4? Well, let's say black, let's just give black a random move. Uh, or actually, let's give black a natural move, castles. You're trying to go h5. Mm, okay. And then if they take you, what do you think I'm, I'm trying to do here with this knight coming to h5? Uh, are you trying to open up this file eventually? Yes. Okay. I'm also looking for this move. Oh, okay. Throwing the rook at it. Okay. Defended by the queen. And so right away when this queen is here, what's the first thing you're thinking of? Uh, I was looking at the x-ray going to like G file here, hitting the bishop. Yes, queen G5. You've got ideas like this. You also can... Get the bishop out like this. The queen's current target is these two pawns, right? So if it was white's move, how can you add a layer of attack here? Help the queen out. You can bring the bishop to d3. Yeah. Once the bishop comes out, black basically has only one move that doesn't lose. See if you can spot it. How does black... It's not this because we just take it. So how does black stop our attack? Hmm. It's interposing. It has to, you have to block the path of one of the pieces. You have to block its vision. All I see that does that without throwing away a uh, strong piece is pushing the pawn to f5. That is 100% right. Okay. So supported by this and this. And then white is still doing well because you've developed a piece. You can bring the knight, so it's, it's going to help the queen also. And in the long run, you told me we opened this H file, so who's going to end up on that square? Oh, that's going to be the rook. Yeah, so the last piece is going to get involved. These positions are horrible to play with black, because you're just, it's an avalanche. Uh, and that's actually why I always say if H4, just play H5. Don't even... Now, a couple of things have to be right for this to happen. So first of all, black has to castle into it. Right? Like, black has to already have their king there. Uh, you have to not castle, obviously. You have to have your options open. Uh, but if black plays h5, well now, I mean, we have to kind of go back to more natural development. And that's kind of what I do. Opponent took, I did this, he plays c6. So now I move my queen out. Because I'm trying to go long. Knight d7, castles, castles. Okay. Now, this is a bit harder, but opposite side castling, how can white make progress in this position? What, what's next? You get here, what's next? Hmm, I was looking at a way of breaking the pawn chain here on the king side, but mm -hmm. I'm not seeing an optimal way. Let's try to use, so rather than words, let's try to go for specific moves. So you want to break the structure. What are you thinking about? What moves specifically? 
I, I'm trying to figure out a way of opening the H file. So I'm trying to get rid of that H5 pawn. Okay. Well, how can we target this pawn? We've got this, but there's one move that will help break the the mold there. I'm guessing just pushing the G pawn then. Okay, so very good. Pawn break, right? G4. The problem with this move is that if you do it now, they take and, you know, yeah. we're... Okay, but how do you prepare the move G4? You, you want probably have to... You have to drop the bishop back and push the other pawn. So this will prepare it in 1, 2, 3, but you can prepare it in 1 and then 2. Oh, just moving the rook. Yes. Now, okay, million dollar question. Which rook? Uh, I think it's supposed to be the D rook, right? Since it's not involved in the attack. Yes. Yes, rook g1, exactly. So this is a very, this is also an interesting concept. I was looking at this game after I played it. If you play rook g1, if, first if you plug this into the computer, it wants you to play like a waiting move or break in the center of the board with e4. And I was like, why not this? And then if you let this move sit, it suddenly starts saying white is much better. So computers struggle to see an attack far out. It, I don't know why. It's always been a weak point of computers. Like they underestimate slow attacking, like preparing moves and the move G4. Um, now, if this is your plan, what do you think black is going to do? I want to see how you conceptualize this. What, do you, what is black? Is just, Black's not going to sit there and die. So what do you think black is going to do? Hmm. Uh, I guess they'd try and recognize where the attack's coming, and let's see how they would reinforce that square. But can they stop our plan of G4? No, they can't stop that. At least not that I see. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they could bring the knight in to, like, E5, but he just throws away the knight, so yeah. it doesn't work at all. Yes, exactly. So, like, moves like this, I'm just kind of... I'm totally discounting, we'll just take and everything, yeah. so... And G4 is coming. So, when I think G4 is, like, gonna happen, uh, I'm like, well, Blacks... There's two ways to, to, to face an attack, obviously. Stop it. Or... Counterattack. So there's two spots of counterattack. Maybe in the center, with E5. Or where else? On the other side of the board. So how, how's that gonna work? What are you conceptualizing? How's Black gonna attack you? You could get the queen over to the b6 over there and maybe look to get an attack on king side. Yep, queen side. Or queen side, yeah. right, queen side. Because we, we've, we've put our queen. So queen yep. a5, queen, queen b6. But how about with a pawn? This is very, very important. How will black... You know, let's say the queen comes here, sure, but there's a, there's a certain move here, like a pawn attack, very similar to ours. b5. Oh, okay. So something like this, like, I, I just want you to kind of understand that this is even, like, this is even possible. You know, for me, you build experience, you're like, okay, rook g1, I want to go g4. I know for a fact my opponent is going to play b5. And that's what he does. I mean, they're, they're trying to get a faster attack than me. They want to attack my knight, so my knight doesn't guard my pawn. You suggest that the queen is going to come out. So castled on opposite sides, this is how you pawn storm. Always be thinking the pawns are coming first. Now, I don't care. <laughs> uh, I just go g4. We t he takes, I take. Take, take. Knight f6. Okay, logical. Mm -hmm. Now, I drop my rook back to g2. Why there? Why not g1? Why g2? Because you maybe stack the rooks. Good. Good. You don't just have to automatically go back to where you were. Rook g2. Also, this is guarded. I don't know if that's ever going to be useful. but And, you know, the cool thing is you don't know where you're going to stack. You have the flexibility here. You don't know if you're going to stack on the H file or the G file. So at least you're, you're flexible. They're kind of... Uh, this decision is yet to be made. So knight to H5 gets played. Obviously, guy wants to go here. A couple of ways to handle this. First of all, are you afraid of this? No, because it's guarded. But more importantly, from a conceptual standpoint, why would black not want to trade off the knight for the bishop? You get a pawn more in your attack here, so you could push that pawn to try and clear out that way there. Yes. Perfect. This knight is like the one thing stopping everything. Literally everything. Yeah. Do you remember in the last lesson, this is going to be a conceptual review, uh, how many more, what's that rule? 
How many more attacking pieces than defenders? It's, uh, was it plus two? Yes. In this case, okay. we have four. Because we have bishop, two rooks, and queen. And we can have the knight. So, bam, bam. Now the knight's five. That's what I like to see. That's looking good. So in the game, I tried to be a bit fancy. I, I was inspired. You know, I really wanted to sack my, my, my rook here. Uh, and I was like, dude, you could take my bishop. I don't care. He didn't. He played queen a5. Continued with the plan. So I played king b1. Important that even when you're attacking, you don't just ignore what they want. Because if you just double stack, all of a sudden, you know, this happens. And it's like, oh, okay, that's a bit unpleasant, you know. Because then look, if I take the knight trying to open all this, do they have to take this? No. What are they going to take? They'll take the knight. Yeah, this is actually kind of a problem. So you have to just control and see what they want as well. And then I said, okay, king b1. Opponent went here. We did the double stack. King f8. Now everything is there. This game, we used one pawn break. We did g4. That was the one thing that we did a few moves back to open it up. But now we have to chop it all down with the pieces. So the king moves over. It stops controlling that square. How are you going to make use of the h7 square? It's kind of hidden, but if you find a way to break it all open, you just win the game. Uh, I think it has to start with taking the knight. Well, but he doesn't have to take back. Um, well, you're, that, you're right. Uh, if he doesn't take back, we're just up a knight, right? And then we're just yeah. gonna... So, yeah, just, you know, it's not like... But it, it's 100% this. Oh, okay. Game, okay. Game's just over. Because bishop moves. You have mate. That's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, let's say, the guy goes like e6, for example. Finish this off. Play this against me. I'll, I'll be black. No pressure, but you have mate in four. You also have mate in seven. Okay. Uh, well, I think it starts with delivering this check here. Okay, I'm going to go king e7. Oh, that was like automatic. You're on that three-minute flow. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get quicker at things here. Let's go here. I, I think it starts with taking the no if i take the rook you can take back with queen um huh well use your use your powerful pieces there yeah i think it's just taking this pawn for another check right yeah everything falls apart here everything falls apart if i go king up you have mate in one where is it it's just right here yes nice queen queen and bishop uh and if i go king to c8 it's actually funny i know you had just discounted this move but right now, since the king just is on the back rank, like, bishop d8 is definitely the best move. Because no matter what happens, something's on the back rank. Mm -hmm. So king takes, rook g8 is mate. You clear the path. Queen d8, rook g8. I mean, I trust you'll beat even the strongest of grandmasters in this. But you, you give this with white versus Hikaru, I think, I think you win 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> rook, rook g8. I don't know, man. After what I witnessed playing as Smurf, it, it felt like playing against God himself. That shit was <laughs> wacky. Yeah, I, you know, I'm 2600 Blitz. Even I feel that way. Uh, but the, the easiest thing to do here, if you ever get scared, by the way, is to just do this. You will never, ever, ever lose knight versus five pawns. Worst comes to worst, you go and get this pawn and you make a new queen. Okay, makes so, sense. So if you want to, like, just have a final... Just simplify it. Don't even... What's the only way, for example, what's the only way white can lose this position right now? Back rank mate. Yeah, so you just have to make sure he doesn't get to the G file. Yes, and I suppose, you know, you could say you would lose on time. Yes, but I'm so... Position, I mean, if you hang your queen by accident, you might still be winning because you have so many pawns. Um, so here, couple of things. Number one, early H pawn attack. Especially when the opponent plays g6 and bishop g7. So like this uh, fianchetto, fian, what this is called, the, the fancy Italian word, this bishop g7. You can use this h-pawn attack. If they stop it, the next lesson of the game was the opposite side castling. And then opening up the position, you wanted to go g4, you saw bang, bang, bang. But you can even do it with, with one move. 
And once you find this move, it's all over. Like, it's actually crazy how strong and fast this attack is for white. Uh, and you just look for the one pawn break. For example, if black hadn't gone here, if black just continued on this side, this is the pawn break, right? We would have gone h5 and... Yeah, there's not a whole lot they can do from that position. It's terrible. Just completely lost. Even if we're losing, you know, the pawn, because we're just opening it all up. And bishop is like this. Uh, just bishop h6. Right? Pretty self-explanatory. You told me earlier you wanted to stack versus the bishop on the king. You can also, if you want, bring in the queen. Black's attack is not fast enough. There's nothing over here. So this, this. Black just doesn't have any time. Bishop is coming. Queen comes in. And it's it's game over. Uh, and, and that's kind of like... I have, I have four examples. So we'll take a look at like each one. Here, let me invite you to the next one. And just look at this mix of using the pawns. How the king is positioned. Sometimes the king is in the middle. Sometimes it's not. This game I had white. It was a Sicilian defense. Uh, and I played b3. You've probably... This this might be your worst nightmare if you play the dragon, because with black, don't you go g6, bishop, g7? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, well, I do a knight, knight before that, but yeah. Yeah, like knight... Man, I, if I play you, I'm going to put my bishop here and not let you do that. I saw that... I, I, this happened to me once, because I autopilot these openings a lot. Someone uh -huh. did the same shit and just blasted the bishop, and I had nothing to do to stop it. I, I really like this b3 system. Not, not to, you know, cheese someone... Like, sometimes that is nice, especially if they're playing too fast, but it's a, it's a very unique way to play the position. And opponent put the knight out early, so I attacked it a few times, and, you know, he played g6, I, I, I played, again, you see this h4? <laughs> Two games. See, I see he's going g6, bishop, g7, uh, and then I'm trying to, trying to get him like this. Why am I able to do this? Like, how can I push so many pawns in front of my king? Well, look at his pieces. Are we really going to say that any of his pieces are out? Yeah, it makes sense. No, right? Not really. So go h5. He plays it again. Okay. White to move. Make a threat. We only have uh, one, I'd, one way. I'd yeah. start with that. Nice. Very nice. So if given the option, which one of these two pawns are you going to take? It would be the right pawn, right? For yes. check to get the king out. Stop yes. castling. Oops, that's not what was played yes i accidentally clicked that square yeah of course you got to go this way because if you go this way they just take with the you activate their pieces right so you got to go you got to go pawn takes f7 exactly uh the other thing is when a pawn moves up uh, you're playing a lot of three minute right now so you're not going to be able to sit there with your glass of wine and go, oh you know h5 is destabilizing the light squares nearly you're not going to you're just going to be a little bit more on autopilot trying to create threats but when h5 happens, g6 gets destabilized. Now the only thing protecting g6 is the f7 pawn. And when you go here and create this and this, it's a big problem for black. So my opponent goes here. So with this newfound weakness on g6, what do we do? Uh, probably attack it in the quickest way, right? So you'd go maybe getting the bishop over to d3, maybe? Absolutely. Bishop okay. d3. You don't need to deal with this. Give it away. This is far more valuable. So bishop d3. Okay. Had the opponent gone rook g8, how good are your tactics? White to move hmm. and win. A couple of moves. A little combination here. This actually is an illusion that this is protected. Hmm. Uh, I think I see. It's bringing the queen over h5. Oh, no, it's not pinned. He, he just takes. Uh, you have the... Well, you have everything. You have the right idea. Just do it in the yeah. right order. It's bishop first, then queen. Yep. Exactly. So I'm glad you saw this. You saw g6, h5. They're both in the sights. This is the first move you have to check, period. And then you realize the king cannot guard the rook because of your pawn. Yeah. So you just pick up the rook and you have to win this game. But I mean, hey, bam, bam, bam. Like who's, who's going to stop you from even making a queen, by the way? 
that's big right there yeah you just it's I, very that's another thing i struggle with is the order like i saw the queen move but then mm -hmm. i would have just given away the queen I, I don't know why i just can't get the order right half the time well the rook just moved so you know if this rook wasn't here period this would just be mate so obviously mm -hmm. you see this and i wouldn't say you didn't get the order right i think when i was playing this game i also was you have like a three second four second period where you're just like Wait, I could take one. Oh, I gotta take this. This has no guard, and then I go here. So, but that comes with, you know, that comes with time. Uh, when I played bishop d3, I was like, wait a second, this guy's just completely lost. What, like, so he took my pawn, and I took, and he went here. Okay. King goes to the middle. It looks nice and cozy. White to move. Don't take your foot off the gas. And just like last game, we had the critical pawn break. That made the position open in our favor. White to move, pawn break, open it up. Yeah, it's going in the center, right, at d4? Yes, 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 yes. Very nice. See, you might you might be thinking, like, well, I don't have any checks. Let me just get my pieces out. No, it's got to be d4. Don't take your foot off the gas. They can't take, actually. If they take, like, all the way down, it's just it's over. It's game over. They have to block, and then you take. And you're up at night, and you, like I said, you still have to win, but... Um, I, I, like I always say, if I'm giving you an extra night by move 13, like I did my job, you know, Yeah, uh, that after, makes sense. after that, it's, it's totally in your hands. So D4. Yes, absolutely. You see the queen, the king, you got to open it up. Uh, 98 got played and take, take. Now in this position, I actually did something wrong. So this is, and I, and I want to show this not. I don't only want to show things where I'm like, oh, you know, look at me. I'm so smart and clever. My logic here was that if I took the queen, he has to take with the king because he has to guard his knight. Mm -hmm. If he took with the knight, then we would take, oops, then we would take this knight for free. The knight free, yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get to this position. I'm very happy. But then I kind of took my foot off the gas. Like the queen was the big attacking piece. And when we trade the queen, we now get a position where white is a lot better. Why? Well, that system. White is up a pawn. Black's king is terrible. Black's pieces are terrible. But a few moves later, like, my opponent managed to consolidate and get the right trades and actually stabilize the position. So I missed a really big chance right here. Bishop d7, king d8. How do you add something here as fast as possible. Help the rook, but it has to be ASAP. I feel like the only piece that gets there fast enough is bringing the knight into the play at b5. But that knight, doesn't really get it there. Yeah, it's like it, knight b5, of course, is good. But when I think knight b5, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think knight b5? I was looking more of like going for, you know, like anticipating a castle and looking for an attack when he castles, since it seems like that's going to be the next move. But Yeah, well, remember, he has to like castle by hand, right? Cause like, oh, right, 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 yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is what you meant. You were like king c8, you know, a6, try to get, uh, try to get the king to safety. I'll tell you what I think. I'm not thinking of myself. When I play knight b5, I'm thinking, what are they going to do when they, when they see my knight? They're going to go here. Like, when you play knight b5, you don't have an immediate threat. So the first thing I think of is, what if they just attack me? Like, what if, you know, just call my bluff. Yeah. And now you just got to go back to the middle, which is fine. It's not a blunder by any stretch of the imagination. But I do want you to be thinking about this, especially in like a, in like a pog champs, like a 10 minute. You want to make a move, but what if they just... Those are just, you know, call me, call me on my shit when I get to B5. Um, so I want help on the D file, which means we got to get this rook some help, which means I didn't see this. I completely missed this. Um, but. Hmm. Um, shit. Is it bringing the bishop down to like e4 to look to attack the knight nearby? Not that I think that really helps on the d file, but that's all I'm seeing. Bringing the bishop up? It's a, it's a, it's a weird one. How do we get the second rook in the game? 
Oh, do we do a rook lift? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, Ow. okay. Do you just bring it up to h3 and then the I know, cross? yeah. It's the weirdest thing ever. It's like normally it's this way and that way, but it's this way. Okay. Because oh, right. traditionally your brain is like one, two, three, right? Yeah. That's how we, you know, we get the night out and everything. But no, it's even faster. And if I had found this, the game would have been significantly easier. Uh, we could have could have won it much faster than I did. And what's funny is that how does Black stop us? Like Black has to go King C seven. <laughs> Doesn't that just walk into our other idea? Yeah, and that's when we bring the knight up. Yeah, this is this is terrible. Like Black is just getting rolled here, uh, with the, with the double. And sometimes you can trade the queen as long as you have more attacking pieces in the game. But I think that objectively speaking, trading the queen is probably not the right idea. Like you have the the wild card, so just move it. And then finish your development. Maybe move it out of the way of like a knight d4 or something. Make sure that it can't get hit with the knight somehow. But um, trading the queen when you're attacking is not... It's not, not the most desirable thing. Here we can kind of see why. Yeah. Um, and yes, people are... I gave a warning to the chat before we started the lesson uh, to keep backseating to a minimum. Otherwise, they would get called out on it. But... Yes, folks are like, you know, you can go knight b8. And I mean, you know, if you have to play this move on move 16 to defend yourself, that's kind of the end of the lesson. Uh, good luck and good night. You have three pieces on this side, which, which can't move. This is, like I always say, we have to win. We still have to win the game. It's not over, but it's just about as close as possible. So um, that's, that, that's as far as that goes. But in the opening only possible if we find the break and then we find the immediate attack on the weakened spot there's always this lurking tactic and uh in game flow seeing this king come to d7 and going oh i gotta open the board here like i gotta like the first thing i thought is king is on the same file as my queen i have to open up my queen so you have to go d4 it's not don't mm -hmm. even think and the knight c3 knight f3 um etc i got two more for you run it any questions so far? No, it all makes sense. Absolutely. Yes, in a, in a game, of course, this is three minutes, so it's not going to be perfect. This one is... is uh, the opening of this game is uh, pretty stupid, so please disregard. Um, I mouse slipped very early. I, I meant to play e4. I played e3, so then I went... Just kind of... I went full stupid. But here's another <laughs> game, by the way. We have this h4, h5. <laughs> nice. He really, he really didn't like me playing this h5 move. Uh, but, okay. I guess I can even pause right here. What is this? Move 9 is coming up for white. Why is this position slightly better for white? Based on what? My guess would be that he's weakened his uh, king side pawn structure here. I feel like there's some attacking options. Like if you can get like the queen to move, you can start looking to get onto the seventh rank there. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of weak spots near the king. Uh, if you castle king side, seven of black pawns are on light squares. <laughs> really? Like. All we gotta do is get this dark squared bishop out, and it's like Swiss cheese. All of these weaknesses. Plus, what is this? Like, why is the queen there? Like, mm -hmm. I know it doesn't, like, we don't have a move to immediately attack the queen, but where is this knight going if, if, if all of its natural spots are blocked? Yeah, it can only really go to the rim. And if it goes here, well, I mean, if it can't come back, because we'll take the pawn... As the knight gets in the way of the queen, very clumsy position. So again, you can go fat, you can go slow development, but I played f3. Now only move is bishop f5. How do we hit the bishop again? You just push the pawn again, right? Yes. So e4, big take. Now this is supported by both horses. The bishop has to go back to g4. When we made this trade, what opened for black? The F file. I guess for us, the F file opened, I would say. Oh, oh right, right, right. Uh, for black, 
Oh, he, there's now a hanging pawn on d4 there. Good. So that's important to notice, which is why I played it should be three. Just gotta develop a piece and defend the center. I could have, in this position, also played e5, attacking the knight. Computer laughs in my face, tells me that's the best move after the game, but, you know, it's a, it's a give and take. It's a three minute game, can't always be super perfect. So bishop g7, and now I did go e5 indeed, because the knight has to get out. So first things first, we took. Why? Because this rook is on a terrible square now, and can black castle? Nope. No, I cannot castle. Alright, so rook h7. Bishop e2, wanted to get this bishop away. Bishop f5, castles, castles. And I want to play the move d5, but I played the move bishop d3. Why is this trade good for white? This just conceptual trade of getting these bishops off the board. Mm, just from a positional standpoint, you take back with the rook and you still put pressure on where you want to go at d5, I guess, would be my thought. Um... Um, that is, I would say, I would, I would give that, I'd give that full credit. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I think right. just on a, on a very, very simple note, you know, we don't even we don't even need to be like too too big brain about this. This bishop is Black's most powerful piece. It's the, the only piece that Black has that's really doing anything. And okay, makes sense. Best piece is a stretch. I wouldn't. It's like the the best of the worst kind of. So you go bishop d three, and you just get rid of it. Now Black has no active pieces whatsoever. So I want to go d five again. It's a move that I. I I really want to play. However, who is on the end of the C file? These two pieces. Yeah. You put it. You uh, put yourself in check at the end of the the uh, exchanges. Yeah, you know, I I want to take with the knight maybe, and my king is pinned, so I play king b1. Slow move again. This is uh, remember the first example we played this move, king b1. So two examples ago, the queen was out lurking on the queen side hitting our pawn, and before we destroyed on the king side, we just throw in the move king b1. We play king b1, it gets the queen uh, uh, kind of off the same line of our king, and now uh, black is actually playing a decent move, bishop h6, trying to trade off one of my, one of my attackers. So, knight e2, reroute, another concept. Have you heard of rerouting? Yep. So we're trying to like, you know, we, we're not going to make forward progress. I want my knight to end up on this side of the board. And the constant kind of lurking pressure of one move and one move in particular makes this position basically unguardable, undefendable. That's a word for black. And what move is that? Three, three examples now. Yeah, is it just pushing the G pawn? So if we, well, to which square? Oh, no, that wouldn't work. I was looking at g4, but that's not going to work. Okay, so g, idea is an idea. g4 doesn't work, but where, where is it? Love your videos. It's just going back to the middle there at d5. Exactly. King is in the middle. See, like, these flank pawn pushes g4 are really good if the king is there. But king's here. Yeah. d5 is game Oh. That sounded like wind howling. Was that? Oh, a... That was my dog. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought it was either a fire truck or wind. That was that was the husky. No. Oh, that was the husky. Jesus. Uh, okay. Take take. Queen b six. Hey, layered learning. We build on the previous example. You gonna take that queen? No, we don't want to because we we're using her to attack, right? Yeah. So where are we gonna put it? What's the best square for the queen? There's there's a couple of squares which are good. I actually didn't play the best move, but. I want to see what you think. Where, where should you put the queen? It should still be something to reinforce d5, right? So it'd need to be something like f3. f3 is reasonable. It doesn't have to necessarily reinforce, because if you come in with the knight, you're also happy. Oh, true. It still attacks the queen. Still got a lot of uh, f3. I went to um... c3, because I, I didn't want the rook to get to c8, but it's not mm. even the best move. How do you... You can infiltrate with the queen. How do we infiltrate with the queen? 
Oh, is it by trying to get her to like G3 here and push up that way? Yes, to G8. Okay. Yes. And uh, I didn't play that because I'm a human. But, you know, you're going to get this exact same position in Pog Champs. You'll play Queen G3, Queen G8. And the, the Queen's just paralyzing everybody there. Just nothing that, that Black can do. Throw in the Queen and, and it's all good. Queen C3, also good. Knight G6. And now we transform our attack into a winning endgame. Not all attacks have to end in mate. Some attacks can end just winning material or just converting to a better position. And now, question for you. Would you take here or would you push? Uh, taking there to... Taking there has the advantage of opening the D file. Like if you push, you close down the rook's attack up there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like taking is the right play, even though he takes it back with queen. Very good. It's good that your first instinct taking is is a hundred percent right. Because if you push the pawn, the drawback, like on the one hand, you're like, ooh, two more squares, I get a queen. I mean, black's gonna go here. Like, let's be serious. And yeah. then black is gonna go here and guard everybody. And suddenly you're. Your task is significantly harder. You're only going to win this game by virtue of the C file, if that makes sense. Because how else are you ever breaking in? Yeah, everything else is shut down. Yeah, and then maybe you can go G4, and if this takes, you shred this open, and if that takes, you open that. F but too much, too much, too much. Your first instinct is 100% right. As unnatural as that might look, taking is the best move. Because if they take with the queen, like you said, the rook comes in, and takes everything. And the opponent spent kind of the rest of the game trying to deal with this. I traded one rook, made sure, again, see even in the middle of the attack that my king always has a getaway. Uh, and then I had to find, in low time, obviously, how to finish this off. What is one thing that you are always trying to avoid falling into in this position? Since you can't get mated anymore, what's one thing you might accidentally blunder? Oh, uh, you might put your king on the same row as the uh, rook or the queen, giving it up on a check. Yes, you can get skewered. And if you abandon your king entirely, you might get perpetualed. So, for instance, mm, yeah. queen d6, as good as that looks, it looks like, oh, that's it. It abandons the c4 square, and now the game is a draw. Because if you play b3, I have queen c2. Bam, 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 draw. King's only getaway is how. He has to drop back to A1, but then yes. you just deliver a check at F1, and it's just back and forth, yeah, or exactly. not even F1, but wherever. Oh, as yeah, as close as possible. I'm not, I'm not doing the six feet thing. And then, <laughs> uh, there's Queen F1, even this, so you're going to have to run your king out, or, or I use this check and I even take the pawn. All of a sudden, it's like, whoops, how did that happen? Um, so be very careful. Like you, 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 you can get a totally winning position. Like chess is like that. 37 moves you've played, 36. Winning, 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 one move draw. And that's why you've, you've always got to make sure that there's a distance for your king. You have breathing room and you're, you're finding a way. And ultimately what ended up happening was uh, this position. Opponent played this move, threatening my pawn. White to move and win. A, uh, a finishing touch here. Guard your A4 pawn, but also play a move that wins the game. The only move that does both is taking on a5, right? And then you come well, up. A5 is, taking on a5 is a good move. But you have even better. Uh, pushing the pawn to defend it doesn't... It's too, too beta. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> I, wanna, I want you to be an alpha. Use the hierarchy. Checks, captures, attacks. Once you get to attacks, you will... You will realize what it is. Then you go down, like, you know, attacking Black's most powerful pieces. Do I have a way to attack Black's queen? Oh, uh, just driving the queen away with uh, bringing the rook down? Is yes. that the, that's the order? I see. Yes, yes, yes. So you look at, do I have any checks? You, you found the capture. This might be the easy blitz move. Not wrong, but does go away from c4. Could get yourself into a little trouble, but you'll have to be brave and go up. And now there's no checks. Okay. But are you brave is the question. <laughs> 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 it resounding no. 
Yeah, King A3, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna, you know, one blunder is all it takes, and now it's just a draw. Like, so it'd be very, sometimes it's the weird up king move, and now there's no checks. That's what you're asking yourself. Earlier, it was the knight move. They can attack us with the pawn. You want to go B3, but then go, what are they going to do? Oh, they're going to check me, so I can't go B3. I have to go King A3, and now they have no checks. Um, right. And bringing the rook down to drag the queen away lets you just take the rook above it. Yeah. Exactly. So when the opponent went here, I was like, wait a minute, I have rook D4. Um, when I'm playing my games, I'm not actively thinking, uh, I'm not actively thinking like, well, how do I check capture attack? Those moves will start coming automatically to you just as hypotheticals. You'll be looking mm -hmm. at a board and your brain's going to be like, you could go here and then you're going to go, oh wait, that's just winning. Cause I hit this and this, and there's no way for the queen to guard the rook. Yep, so queen has to go back, you take the rook, it's a check, then you bring rook up, d8, yep. could be a mate depending on where they went, yeah, I see. Queen here, you take the rook, if the king comes out, it's a couple of different mates, check or check, and then bring that. So now, oh, oh, this is actually a really good one. Uh, you notice you can go like rook d7, right? And yeah, what's the problem with the move rook d7? Mm. little bit of a trick question but really more conceptually than like a move response it's slow it gives oh. black a move oh okay right? like, yeah he just pushes out uh, the pawn right give himself another square well i'm even thinking more aggressive than giving yourself squares i'm thinking check oh shit okay yeah you almost blunder a draw here you almost blunder a draw you're very lucky your rook still covers you know like you're oh, going to have okay. a game where you go slow and you blunder perpetual and then you want to throw your computer out of a window. So how do you do this in a more forcing way rather than rook d7 when it's not a check? Yeah, it's going to f8, right? Exactly. g5 or f8, king goes now, they have to lose their queen. Now your only task is don't stalemate. So you're experienced enough. Um, and uh, this is just, you know, this is easy. So... I just don't want you to be like, all right, queen e7, rook, bam, easy. You know, I, I, I want you to think, check, check, check. Don't let black even kind of get a moment to get back into this game. So, again, lessons from this one. Uh, go all the way back to the opening. The pawn play to take space, right? And then trading off our opponent's most active piece, still looking for that pawn break. The one important pawn break to open up the whole position don't trade queens trading a piece or two is not bad and i was most impressed that your first instinct here was to open up the rook because i thought you were going to say push the pawn and make a queen and you just oh, said no. I'm, way, I'm way above that level now i i like it you're just like you know d6 and easy d6 and it makes the game so much easier you open it up you get your rooks in the game and then make the luft for your king and always be monitoring whether or not uh, you can get hit with some sort of check or like loop where you will get caught with a perpetual. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I mean, that's now for the last one. Real quick, let me, let me use the bathroom. I'll be sure. right back. It's rough. All right, I'm back, baby. Hey. All right. Uh, oh, I did it. I did in fact invite you. Uh, let's go. Here we go. E4. Same game with the white pieces. This one, slightly different Sicilian. Now, what do you think is going to happen at this point? What pawn am I going to push? Hmm. <laughs> three, three times it's happened. G6. It's got to be this one. Got to go for some H4s. Got to go for some H4s. Of course, opponent does this. We get this position. Now... I've castled, he has not castled. What do we want to do to the center? Open it up. All right, so how are we going to open it up? Um, I think you just start by taking on d5, right? You absolutely 100% start by taking on d5. So opponent takes back with the pawn. Now, if the opponent gets one more move, they are going to castle. So for example, if you play rookie one and you're like, oh, I'm so clever, I'm pinning the knight to the king, then I'm gonna go here. Mm -hmm. They're going to castle and you're gonna go, oh yeah, they could do that. 
So after takes takes, what's another forcing move that you have? Use the hierarchy. No checks. We don't have a check, but we have some yeah, other stuff. Checks. You can. I mean, there's a hanging pawn on b5. Mm, it's guarded. Careful. Oh, he moved the rook. You're right. That was, yeah, that's a, yeah, okay. a refined idea by black. Rook b8, b5. Okay, yeah, I didn't even notice. All right. Um. Even hypothetical captures. Knight b5 is bad because they take with the rook. We don't get anything specific. But what else can we take? I guess you can just immediately take that pawn and then recapture with bishop. I think, was it? I think we, it might have been our lesson last week where I said, you don't need to go to the, uh, you, you don't need to go to the end of the, of the trade, right? Yeah. You don't need to go to the end, but you can start with this or this. Right, but let's start with this hypothetically. So this comes here, this comes here. So now we've got this, but we also, you know, at the end we see all that. Right. We don't need to take this now. And if we give a check, what's gonna happen? They have another he's, knight. Yeah, he's just gonna block with the knight. He's gonna block with the knight, kinda hold it all together. He's not gonna move this knight because f seven is on the other side. He wants to close this diagonal. So, we have an even more forcing move here. And let me just show you one more thing. If queen to f3, this move looks like it just wins. Because, look, bam, 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 bam. But how does black guard the two biggest problem spots? He just puts the bishop in the middle at e5, or e6. Yes, very good. Bishop e6, as scummy as this looks, it does hold it all together. It just holds it all together. Bishop e6 holds everybody. So you need to be faster than that. So you go knight takes f7. We sack two knights. They take. Okay. Now what's our most forcing move? Is it delivering that check now with the queen at f3? So we hit these two pieces. Opponent can't really run this way because we take with check. And then we win back our other knight, so we immediately cash out on our investment. We get both knights, mm -hmm. and we're winning because we sacked a couple pawns. Uh, we sat, we got some pawns when we were sacrificing, but now we play queen f3. However, in the game, the opponent felt brave, as I like to say. King e6, very brave move, super brave. So, what's the first thing you think of? You see king e6. What's the first thing e you think of? E1 right away yeah. is the first thing I think of. Yes, it was the first thing I thought of too. It turns out that it's not even the best move because I hate computers. But <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but of course you think rookie one. I mean, it must be the best move. Opponent blocks. So, when you see knight e5, what are you thinking? I, so, I was looking at bringing the bishop over to f4 there, uh, yes. attacking that. The knight can't take because it's pinned. So bishop f4, definitely. I'm also thinking bishop g5. I ended up playing bishop g5, but both moves are 100% right. Th are you worried about this? No, because it can't attack because the rook is pinning it. Good. So that was uh, that was bait. I'm sorry. I, I want to apologize. I was setting a <laughs> verbal trap. I wanted you to go, I got to move my queen. No, you don't. Right? No, you don't. You could just keep developing. So bishop g5. Uh, opponent should play queen up. Just hold on for dear life to everybody. But opponent plays rook f8, which is actually not a bad move. They want this and this. Okay. That's what they want. They want to, and you'll say, well, hold on, rook f3, gf3, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, but hold on a second. We sacked two knights, remember? Like, you might think, oh, I get a rook. I'm so clever. It's a free rook. No. <clears throat> We gave away two knights. Like, let's not forget about that. So we don't... Do we want a queen trade? No. So where are we going to move the queen? What's the best queen move we have? Well, I was looking at delivering the check at h3, but then once he gets out of the way, it's still under attack from the bishop. So that's nice. not going to work. Nice, nice. See, everyone here would go, okay, queen h3. They would say, queen h3, king moves, I take queen, I'm so smart. But you... Very nice. Dude, 
Very, very nice. So if you're not going to go queen h3, what are you going to do? Mm. Uh, I guess you could... Uh, g3 doesn't seem horrible if you drop the bishop back after mm -hmm. the attack. Maybe just putting more pressure on that. But I don't think that's the move. So queen g3 is good. Oop, oh, Jesus, I'm garbage arrow drawer. Queen g3 looks good. You have a way to create a threat on this pawn. Because this pawn's oh, actually not guarded. I see, it's just bringing it up to e4. Yes, what's hidden in all this is there is one weak link. Like, this move doesn't look like it accomplishes anything on its own. But there's two threats to queen e4. First of all, this is a threat. Because they cannot take because of the pin. If the queen gets in here, it's just it's over. This is now, a new, uh, of course, a threat. And when the queen moves out to e, where can this f-pawn go? You can just push it up to f4, win the knight. Yes. Combination of peace play, pawn play, pawn targets, and all this. This position is is lost. Now, what's in the game, the opponent played c4. And tragically lost their queen. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. I, yeah, and then I just took the pawn and they resigned. But um, had they defended the queen, so like let's say they played queen d6, uh, maybe not queen d6, not queen d7, let's say queen d6, sure. Okay, I want you to win this against me. I want you to okay. use everything that we just talked about. What was What's, what's next for white? I think we take the knight first, because uh, if I take the pawn right now, you drop it back, you still defend the queen, and we just trade queens. You're saying queen g6, I would have played king d7? Yeah, because, I mean, you still defend the queen if I take. You're right about the queen, but what am I not defending? The knights. Ah, uh, I just take the knights. No, not the Wait. knights. Well, there's some, someone else. Oh, the bishop, the bishop. The bishop. See, actually, uh, queen g6, but, that, but like... That is how a chess thought process works. You go, I'm uh, not going to go here because... because. But wait a second, do I have to take the queen? F4 is still very strong, obviously. That was the backup plan. Um, okay, I'm going to... I'll play rook F5. <laughs> Hanging on for dear life here. Okay. Take with the... Hmm. You want a queen trade? No. This is our main attacker right now. So... What are you going to do? It doesn't work. Um, hmm. So I have to do a queen move. Anything else and we trade queens. Or I guess not necessarily. I don't know. I don't know how I get out of this position without trading queens. I mean, I th no matter what I... I come up on top of material here, but I definitely don't see where I go to not trade queens. What well, about... I, mean, I, I guess if I start here, you can't take back with the queen. Good. So you found the check. Very nice. So bishop takes d5. The only issue is that after this, it's very... Uh, oof, it's very... Kind of cramped, right? Yeah. It's very cramped. So... Now let me ask you a question. This is this is very difficult, very 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 uh, tricky position. So of course you see bishop takes knight, right? But you also say you have to make a queen move. So combine. Oh, I take with the queen instead of the bishop. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, about, okay. and then now where will I move? Uh, you only really have one spot to go, which is f seven, right? Nope. Oops. It's mate. Oh, it's covered. 
It's me. Oh, I see. Uh, you're right. Oh, I see now. Yeah. I didn't so, even notice that it was mate. Yeah, it's it's a very weird mate, I got to tell you.